I annoy some photographers occasionally. Why? Well, when we have a camera like this, which will do practically everything for you, I operate cameras like this manually. I take charge. I don't need to know about photo stacking for my landscape shots because I understand how depth of field is adjusted by aperture choice and also lens choice. Furthermore, I save to RAW instead of JPEG so that I can adjust the colours myself in post-production. Furthermore, I don't rely on ESP or matrix metering. I spot meter with the help of an electronic finder. I take control of my photography rather than just press a few buttons as one might do on a smartphone. I rely on some aspects of camera computerization. The two most useful features in recent years has been the electronic finder and the image stabilizer, either in camera or lens. Neither of those two things could I do without. Also, with the transfer from film to digital, then post-production in computer software has become increasingly important. Not, as in some cases, to put things into pictures that were never there, but to put back things that the camera cannot do on its own, perhaps not without a bit of help from ourselves. Before I start a shoot, I set the camera up with my basic settings, which I'll tell you about at the moment. But what is important here is that whatever I set, I can get out of. I don't do anything which I cannot backtrack from, particularly if what I'm trying to achieve can be done in post-production later. What's the point doing it in camera if you can't backtrack, yet it can be done in post-production. That surely is far better. Obviously, exposure of the subject, then you don't have so much control. But there are still things that you can do by taking a bit extra control, such as, as we shall see later, spot metering in particular. So what are those basic settings I start with in the camera. Now if you excuse me I'm going to consult my notes for this just to make sure I get it right. First of all I start with the mode on program working to aperture or shutter priority later if necessary. Some people get program mixed up with auto. It is not the same. You can still do other adjustments, which of course you can't do in auto. For quality, for optimum performance, I keep the ISO at 200. There's no point in increasing the ISO to a higher figure if it's not necessary. I then underexpose everything by a third of a stop. This is in case I'm working quickly because I don't want to accidentally have blown out highlights. And this is, can so easily happen in clouds. Focusing is on S hyphen AF and the autofocus I keep in the center. Of course, I switch the face priority off and the image stabilizer is on S hyphen IS, auto for hand holding, and it's very effective, believe you me. Aspect I keep at four times three, color space SRGB, and the white balance on whatever the day is 
doing. But of course, this is not essential if you are saving to RAW because you can do those adjustments later. Might be more important if you're safe, saving straight to a JPEG. I leave everything else on the factory default. Now these, I stress, are the basic or starter settings that won't tie my hands and I can change, I only change them when absolutely necessary. These days I spot meter everything and this I can only do successfully with an electronic finder which is a great improvement over an optical finder because now you're getting a pre preview from the camera's computer. Here's a little experiment you may like to try. Put the metering on spot and the metering point in the centre just for argument's sake and then look through the electronic finder and move the camera around. You don't have to press anything except perhaps to focus it but what you will notice is the exposure changing dramatically as you move the camera around. Now compare that with center weighted. The exposure still changes but not to the same degree. If you now put the metering on ESP or matrix then when you move the camera it hardly changes at all. Now for me when it comes to metering through experience which of course is something I cannot teach but using spot I will then select that part of the image that represents the whole scene and lock it and I will go into that in just a moment. ESP or matrix metering are very good at giving you a correct exposure but where problems manifest themselves is a composition having a high dynamic range. All too often in that situation you can easily have overexposed highlights or underexposed shadows or even both in the same shot. Of course, HDR has come along since. Personally, I find the colours rather artificial. And anyway, before HDR, there were ways around this problem, that is to correct highlights and shadows where they are incorrectly exposed and usually achieved in post-production, but not perhaps without a little bit of help in camera before we start. An extreme case of what I'm talking about here is a shot inside a church, say down the nave or the choir, and at the far end you've got a much brighter window and guess what? Yes, it is overexposed because the general interior of the church needs a lot more exposure and the camera cannot handle it on its own with, with perhaps the exception of HDR but I'm going to ignore that because in landscape work you can to a lesser degree get a similar problem. It's all too easy if you're not too careful where you've got a lovely sunny day with cumulus clouds that you overexpose those clouds removing all detail. Also, waterfalls in a dark ravine. You need to swap meter that waterfall, otherwise you will overexpose it. There's always some detail. It's not a pure white, as so often can be the case. You can, of course, spot meter using center-weighted or ESP. But having the metering on spot, it is much more precise, particularly for fine-tuning the image. 
By all means, use the histogram if you find that helpful. I don't. My final judge are these things up here, my eyes. Now we come to the way I spot meter. I prefer to have the metering point in the centre, but usually you can move it around. If it's in the centre, I know where it is. Then, with the metering on spot, I will then search around the view, half the pressing the shutter button, until I find the exposure, and this only comes with experience. After all, we are talking about the craft of photography. So through experience, I know what type of exposure is going to represent the whole scene. And this takes a bit of practice. When you have found that, you then half depress the shutter button to lock. Now, that also locks the focusing. If the focusing point is different, then detach the auto focus and manually focus before you take the meter reading. So, with your finger lightly depressed, you don't take the picture, but, ah, do you hear, do you hear the little, I don't know where that's going to come through, but it's locked, it's telling me it's locked. Now, the metering point over there, if it's not the right composition, but the right composition is over here, then keeping my finger on the button, not taking the picture, but when I move the camera to the correct composition, I then take the picture. It was rather a long exposure because it's rather dark in here. So that is broadly speaking how I spot the meter. And by the way, if you, in moving the camera, in moving the camera from the metering point to the composition point, you release the shutter button, you lose that information. So you have to start all over again. But don't forget, it takes a bit of practice. Or as my music teacher once said to me, Derek, practice makes perfect. And that applies to photography as well. Of course, the shock news at this point is that when you look at the picture, particularly if it's the classic case I've mentioned already, looking down the church with a bright stained glass window, and we look at the raw image, and yes, the window is overexposed, and the interior is underexposed. But the amount of overexposure in the window and underexposure in the interior, I have carefully calculated by spot metering and using my eyes so that when we get to the next stage of post-production, I know what to do. And what is important here is that with this particular scenario, where I spot meter from is important. And it's not the brightest part of the picture, but somewhere quite close. Coming now to adjustments in Adobe Lightroom, I have covered this in more depth and detail in one of my other programs, which I won't repeat here, but I've put the link in the top right-hand corner of the current screen. But basically, and I'm showing you the Lightroom panel, I bring the highlights and whites right down and increase the blacks and the shadows up. That balances the exposure quite nicely. I bump up the clarity and vibrance a bit, but not saturation. I find that makes the colours rather artificial. A word of warning, this is not a perfect answer, and this is where the craft and skill of photography comes in. And that is, in increasing blacks and shadows, you could, you have to be very careful here, you can inadvertently add noise. Now, for that reason, you might wish to spot meter a little bit more 
towards the shadows and let the window become more overexposed? The answer to this can only be experience. After we, we're talking about the craft of photography and not instant gratification. Of course, all of this can be done in HDR, which I've said before, I find the colours rather artificial, a view which is shared by other photographers. I feel this way I'm putting the craft back into photography. Excellent as it is, I'm not allowing computerization of cameras to override what I am trying to do. I feel at times that cameras today are marketed towards people, and I, are they photographers incidentally, but looking for quick answers. And certainly in landscape and architectural photography, that way forward, in my opinion, we are in danger of achieving the perfect average. Thank you.